Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Time to Football. It's another Wednesday night, another show, and another rant about my favorite team, the Atlanta Falcons. They're letting the whole fan base of Atlanta down. Oh my gosh, I talked about this last week. We've got a lot to talk about. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of the show. There's a lot to talk about. You know, on the show, we've got, uh, we're talking about Carson Wentz, Nick Foles, taking over as the Chicago Bears quarterback, Dwayne Haskins as the patient's running out in D.C., talking about the COVID-19 outbreak as well. But ladies and gentlemen, we have to continue this rant that I was talking about last week when the Falcons gave up this lead to the Dallas Cowboys. Great, the leg, kicking this amazing onside kick. Was it an amazing onside kick or was it a bad play by the Atlanta Falcons? A little bit of both. And then this week, it was in our hands. And all of a sudden, it took a switch at the quarterback position for Nick Foles to come in and destroy the Falcons yet again in the fourth quarter. Time and time and time again. This is a reoccurring issue. Last week, I talked about this. It was a coaching issue. At this point, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Dan Quinn... I'm sorry. You're out. If the Falcons don't make the playoffs, he's going to be out. Even if the Falcons make the playoffs and they lose in the first round, he's out. That's what I believe. It's coaching at this point. It's coaching. Your team is too talented. Your offense is too talented, at least. The defense, yeah, that's not that good. This team is way too talented to give up these big leads over and over again and it goes back to coaching the play calling whether it be Dirk Cutter the offensive coordinator being a little bit too uh, aggressive and not running with the football and just letting the the clock run out passing the ball incompletion after incompletion stopping the clock so the Bears could come back 26 to 10 was the score in our hands in our hands I don't know. I, I I just Dan Quinn, he's out. And for you guys that were wondering why did I why was I so aggressive with my Atlanta Falcons jersey, don't worry. If it rips, it's okay. It's Adidas, not Nike. I got it from Plato's Closet for fifteen dollars. Man. Frustrating to be a Falcons fan right about now. But in this episode, we're gonna be talking about a few topics. First, we're gonna start with the COVID-19 outbreak with the Tennessee Titans and the Pittsburgh Steelers. What's the status on that? Also going into Nick Foles and talking a little bit more about the Atlanta Falcons. Nick Foles becoming the starter of the Chicago Bears and how is that going to affect the Chicago Bears being 3-0? Are they going to stay a pretty good team moving forward and could they be a playoff team as well with Nick Foles as the starting quarterback? We're also going to be talking about, uh, speaking of Nick Foles, the man that the Eagles chose to stick with over Nick Foles, Carson Wentz. The Philadelphia Eagles quarterback has not been looking good as of late, but that, in our eyes, does not lie all on Carson Wentz. We're going to explain that in a little bit in the show. And then we're also going to talk about the patients running out for Ron Rivera and uh, the coaching staff in D.C. with Dwayne Haskins. Should there be a quarterback change coming up for the Washington FT? We're going to get to all of that, but first... What we have to do is we have to uh, award a player with the most prestigious award in this show, the Hungriest Player of the Week. Uh, Before we move forward with the Hungriest Player of the Week, by the way, if you guys are listening to this podcast on iTunes, just know that we have a YouTube channel. Go on over to youtube.com slash time to football. Subscribe to us on there. You can watch the show live as we premiere it. Uh, every Wednesday night, and then we have a chat on the side as well uh, if you're watching this on a computer or underneath if you're watching this on mobile. So for you guys that are joining us for the chat right now, thank you. How you guys doing? I'm going to be chatting with you guys as well. A lot of regulars that we've been getting on this chat, uh, I feel like there's one guy named Brett who's uh, always commenting and always uh, very uh, inclusive and informative and always commenting and interacting with us on our video. So Brett, if you are on the side right here in the chat, What's up, man? How you doing? He joins us every week. Uh, And a lot of regulars as well. 
uh, join us every week. So the Hungriest Player of the Week, this award is given to a player that not necessarily has the best stats for the week, not necessarily has the uh, best performance, but someone that came in either clutch or was hungry, the one that wanted it the most. And there was a lot of players that we got to mention. There was uh, Nick Foles taking over for the Chicago Bears and leading that comeback against the dreadful Atlanta Falcons. Uh, there was uh, Russell Wilson just continuing his trend of throwing 14 touchdowns through three games. A lot of players that we wanted to consider, but we wanted to go with someone that may not be well known, and that is Buffalo Bills tight end Tyler Croft. A big game for him this past week. You may look at the stats and say four receptions, 24 yards, not so big. The two touchdowns, you may even look at that. Oh, okay, well, that's just an outlier who doesn't do that every week. Of course he doesn't, but this game is when it counted the most. Scoring a touchdown with the Bills going up to a 28-3 lead. Man, these Falcons references just all throughout the show is just going to be coming at me. But this 28-3 lead, when you have a 28-3 lead in the NFL, that means you're going to give up the lead. You could be up 29-3 and you'll be fine. 27-3, yeah, you're good. You're going to win the game. But 28-3, nah. No, there's no chance of winning. The Los Angeles Rams came back being down 28-3. And they eventually ended up with the lead 32-28. And then with Josh Allen driving down the field, questionable pass interference call. But when he needed to throw the touchdown... Who he, who he went to was to Tyler Croft, who caught a touchdown earlier in that game. And then he leaned back, made an athletic play to catch, to catch this game-winning touchdown. Tyler Croft wanted it the most, and he helped lead the Buffalo Bills to this 35-32 victory, ending the hopes for the Los Angeles Rams comeback. And that is why Tyler Croft is the hungriest player of the week for Week 3. Great player, was a great player in uh, Cincinnati, taking over for the injured Dawson Knox. Moving on from the hungriest player of the week, now we're going to get into the topics for this week. The biggest topic going on in the NFL is something unique that we we, we've, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Tennessee Titans are going to play this week. There was a COVID-19 outbreak with the Tennessee Titans. There were four players now confirmed uh, with that outbreak and then five uh, personnel on the staff for the Tennessee Titans that have caught COVID-19 have uh, tested positive for that. So this was after in, in light with that Tennessee Titans and that Minnesota Vikings matchup and the Titans came back, had nine players testing positive. The Vikings as of right now, for, from the time that this video is being filmed or this podcast is being filmed, no one is testing positive for the Minnesota Vikings. What the NFL has done or what teams have done in response to that is just to be on the safe side, since nobody has tested positive for it, the Minnesota Vikings were just like, hey, you know what? Let's just take it easy. Let's take it safe and let's just suspend all in-person activities until Saturday. So that could affect some practice scenarios and maybe some conditioning here and there. Not too much because it's only about six days or so. But the Minnesota Vikings are traveling to, I don't, I don't believe they're traveling to Houston. I mean, they might be playing at home, but they are playing against the Houston Texans this Sunday. So they should be fine in those regards. However, for the Tennessee Titans, they're also suspending in-person activities. But here's the catch. They're playing the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we don't know when that game is going to happen. So far, the NFL has confirmed that that game has been pushed back. And it will be played at a later date. Now, and that could be that could mean uh, this Monday. This, that could mean the Tuesday coming up. We still don't know. I remember there was one time recently. The last time an NFL game happened on a Tuesday was between the New York Giants and the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, this was a few years ago, back in the uh, Tavares Jackson uh, days. If you remember the old Minnesota Vikings stadium, they needed a new. Uh, dome and they needed a new stadium and that roof of that Minnesota Vikings dome collapsed because it was so much snow uh, that caused that roof to collapse. So what the Giants and the Vikings decided to do is instead of playing their scheduled game that week, uh, they still played it in that week technically, but they played it on a Tuesday. And instead of playing in Minneapolis because of the roof collapsing, 
Detroit opened up their stadium for their uh, their division rivals, and they played that game between the Giants and the Vikings in that stadium. So that was a more of a stadium uh, problem or issue that happened. This, it's a little bit different with the, uh, the diseases. What they're talking about now is if this game doesn't happen on Monday or Tuesday, a lot of people are thinking that this game could be pushed back to another week, to each team's bye week, or they might be switching around some bye weeks to make sure that this game were to happen because the Tennessee Titans, they might be playing on a bye right now or they might have a bye, and they're coming in. They're the ones that are affecting this game. They're the ones that have COVID. They're the ones that have to take those precautionary measures and make sure that they don't spread it to the Pittsburgh Steelers and that this outbreak, you know, you saw it with the MLB, it doesn't become a, a situation like that where almost all the entire uh, organizations, you know, multiple teams could spread the virus, uh, just like the MLB. Now, granted, the MLB they responded well. They responded. They responded quickly, and they're playing postseason baseball, so that's good for them. So I think the NFL should be fine. But this league is a next man up kind of league, so we don't know which players are going to be playing and not playing uh, for the Tennessee Titans. We know some players that have been placed on that COVID nineteen list, and all that means is that they've been exposed. To COVID-19 or they've contracted COVID-19. The NFL will not release the names of who were positive and who was not positive. They're not going to be black and white with that. They're going to be pretty gray with that COVID-19 list. So we won't know who exactly had that COVID-19 outbreak until that game were to be played, if it were to be played this week. But expect a lot of uh, conversation around that and potentially this Pittsburgh Steelers and this Tennessee Titans game being pushed back to another week, and this week being considered the bye week for week four for the uh, Titans and the Steelers. So what does that mean for people that play fantasy football? I know a lot of you guys have some Pittsburgh Steelers and some Tennessee Titans on your rosters, and this is in regards to you guys that have those Ryan Tannehills, those Ben Roethlisberger's, those uh, James Connors, Derek Henry's, Corey Davis's, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster's, Johnny Smith's, and, and so on. You've got to come up with a back, a backup plan. You have to. There, there, there's just no going around it. I know it kind of sucks, and I know it's kind of against the grain, especially for you guys. I'm talking to a guy, actually, a, a subscriber to Time to Football that actually messaged me on Instagram and said, listen, I've got Derrick Henry and James Conner as my RB1 and my RB2. What do I do? This is a crappy situation. Luckily enough, he picked up uh, Miles Gaskin and Carlos Hyde if Chris Carson were not to play. He has Ronald Jones on the bench as well, so he's got some replacements, but this is just part of fantasy football. This just this kind of stuff happens. It, treat it like it's an injury to your players, and there's there's no way of, to avoid it. All right, I, Me personally, in my league, I had Saquon Barkley and Le'Veon Bell on my roster, and both of those guys got hurt, so I had to play off the waivers and make make run with this and, and make it work. So uh, for you guys that have those players that are playing uh, against the Steelers or against the Titans, come up with a backup plan. I've got Corey Davis on my roster. He was going to be my flex, but I'm going to take him out, probably play a streamer, someone like Brandon Ayuk, or uh, you know, if you picked up Carlos Hyde and Chris Carson doesn't play, if you have Miles Gaskin, those kind of players that you can plug in, you can stream, you can be confident because they're, because they're going to get the volume and play and do fairly well for you guys. So I urge you guys, do not wait till the last minute. Make sure you play the waivers right now because we don't know what is going to happen in the time of this filming. But definitely if you're chatting with us live, interact with us. Do you feel like this Titans and the Steelers game is going to happen? Uh, If you're watching this afterwards, after we uh, premiere this, leave a comment down below interact with us. We want to hear your thoughts. Next topic we want to talk about, going back to that, oh, dreadful Atlanta Falcons team letting the city of Atlanta down. Sometimes it hurts being a, a fan of a, oh gosh, I don't, I don't even know how to describe this team. Just Dan Quinn's got to go. He's got to go. But it's not about the Atlanta Falcons. It's about Nick Foles and how he came back to beat the Atlanta Falcons, taking over for Mitchell Trubisky through that game. Was it midway or was it through the third quarter that they took over for Mitchell Trubisky after he threw that interception to Ray Wilson? So Foles comes in. He throws touchdown after touchdown, one to to Jimmy Graham, one to 
Anthony Miller, that ended up being the game-winning touchdown. And he looked solid. He came in, and he's going to be the starter, according to Matt Nagy, of the Chicago Bears team. Let this sink in for a second, that Nick Foles took over for the Chicago Bears. The Bears are 3-0, and and the media treats the Bears like they're 0-3. Believe it or not, they're 3-0. and They beat Detroit, they beat New York, they beat Atlanta. Granted, only one of those teams has a victory. The Detroit Lions upsetting the Arizona Cardinals this past week. Still though, 3-0. and You're off to a good start, but it doesn't feel like it with the Chicago Bears and their quarterback situation with Mitch Trubisky just because they feel like he's been playing so poorly and they decided to move on finally and benching him. And this is the first time that Trubisky has been benched and lost the confidence of Matt Nagy ever since that weird two minutes, one minute in the fourth quarter against the Los Angeles Rams in that one Sunday night game last last year where they put in Chase Daniel. So Foles is the unquestioned starter at this point, according to Matt Nagy. He's going to be playing and he's going to be starting for the Chicago Bears until further notice. Do we feel like that this is a good decision on the part of of the Chicago Bears. There was a, a show of Time to Football that we did a, uh, a few months back. I think this was back in March. We had a co-host, uh, Ali Razak, coming up on this show. And we talked about the topic of Nick Foles being traded to Chicago. It was around that time. And we talked about, is Mitch Trubisky or Nick Foles going to be the starter for the Chicago Bears? And we kind of explained it perfectly on why we think that Nick Foles should be the starter or is going to be the starter for the Chicago Bears. So we're going to roll that clip real quick and we're going to get back to you guys. You don't start or you don't trade for someone with that big of a contract unless you have some sort of plans for them. And I don't believe the fact that the the Bears are just going to trade for him just to push Mitchell Trubisky, just to give him that healthy competition and hope that Trubisky will be the better quarterback. I think at this point, Foles is more than likely the quarterback that can, hey, we'll start you, we'll restructure your contract just a bit, even though you're going to get $15 million guaranteed for sure uh, this upcoming year in 2020. He's going to start for sure. He's more than likely, if it works out for the Bears, Foles is willing to accept less money when he needs a newer contract. Mitch Trubisky, he's at the point right now where he's entering his fourth year in his contract. The Bears don't know if they're going to pick up their fifth-year option. And he's a rookie that's looking to make a lot of money. So if it works out with Mitch Trubisky, he's going to be that next guy, like Dak Prescott, who's asking for like $30 million, $35 million a year. Uh, so I just don't see that happening realistically. I feel like Foles is going to start, whether it's going to be day one. I don't know. Um, day one. But you eventually think that he's going to start. I do. I, I, I do. I feel like Foles is going to be the next quarterback, starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Right after Mitch Trubisky is uh is benched, so that that's my hot take on it. So I don't show that clip just to say, hey, bragging rights. I was correct, but instead I show that clip because it describes the situation with the Chicago Bears perfectly about how Nick Foles came in and was traded from the Jacksonville Jaguars to be that competition for Trubisky, and Nagy and and the general manager could say that listen. Trubisky is our guy that can say it all they want, but the fact of the matter is he was on a short leash. He was. They wanted it to make it work. He was the second overall pick back in 2017. They traded up when they pretty much shouldn't have. They could have gotten Trubisky at number three if they wanted to. They passed up on people like Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. They wanted Trubisky to be a thing and make it work, but at that point, short leash, like I said, Foles brought in a bunch of money. You have to move on with Nick Foles. So what does that mean uh, for the future for the Chicago Bears? If we want to talk about the future and we want to talk about Foles making a lot of money, well, they worked with him. They restructured his contract. Instead of making that $22 million a year that he was making in Jacksonville, he restructured before the season started on April 1st, and he said that he's going to be making $8 million a year. $21 million uh, of that three-year contract is guaranteed. So that's taken a lot of money um, or had taken away a lot of money for the Chicago Bears, so he makes that contract uh, team-friendly. For Mitch Trubisky, they were in a situation where, hey, listen, does he want that contract extension? He's going to have to approve it with Chicago, and at this point, he doesn't seem like they want to pick up on their uh, fifth-year option for Mitch Trubisky. They're eventually just going to move on with Trubisky 
and uh, just go ahead with Nick Foles for the time being. But Foles, he is in his 30s, and he's been around for quite a bit of time, if, if several years, about, since 2013 or 2012. And what do they do with the future at the quarterback position? For the time being, they're going to roll with Nick Foles. But in the draft, in the NFL draft, are you going to get another quarterback, someone like, well, you, you probably can't get Trevor Lawrence because he's probably going to be the number one overall pick and you're already 3-0. and So if you're looking at a team that's going to be getting Trevor Lawrence with the number one overall pick, you're going to have to look at the teams that are uh, haven't won a game yet. Potentially the New York Jets could get, the, uh, could get Trevor Lawrence with the number one overall pick. So you're going to have to uh, draft a quarterback later in the draft or at least trade up to the mid-round. Maybe if you go to the playoffs, you're going to get a later first-round pick. There's a guy from North Dakota State University, Trey Lance, that has been generating some NFL interest that they threw in a whole entire scrimmage just for him, or at least he was one of the big names in consideration for throwing a game together because uh, his conference was not playing football because of the COVID-19 outbreak. And they decided to have just this one game where NFL scouts could come and they can look at Trey Lance, who did not throw a single interception last season. So he's a pretty good quarterback, and he's being talked about as a first-round talent. So could Trey Lance go to the Chicago Bears and replace Trubisky? Absolutely, but potentially Foles later down the road in the future. A lot of things to unpack, but for now, we do believe that it it is a good decision for Nick Foles to be the Chicago Bears' starting quarterback at this point. From one guy that won the Super Bowl MVP in Philadelphia in 2017 to another guy that might have won the NFL MVP on that same team, Carson Wentz is the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles and currently it's not looking so good for Wentz and Philly. 0-2-1 is the record after that tie game against the Cincinnati Bengals. The Eagles tied... About 10 years ago, I want to say, a few years ago, with Donovan McNabb as the quarterback of the Eagles against the Cincinnati Bengals. So it happened yet again. He tied because he said he didn't know that a game could end in a tie. And you just keep on playing over and over until there is a victor. But Carson Wentz ties this game for the Philadelphia Eagles against the Bengals. Thankfully, there were no fans in that Philly crowd. Otherwise, there would be a lot of booze going on. And and I am don't know if this was true or not, but if you watched last week's Philadelphia game, were fans booing even when there were no fans in Philly? I thought I heard booze. It doesn't make any sense. Why would they play, play booze over uh, the speaker when you boo your home team? But anyways, fact of the matter is, Carson Wentz has not been looking good with the Philadelphia Eagles. The question is, though, Is that all on Wentz or is that on the team of Philadelphia and the injuries that they've had? Listen, this receiving core is depleted for Carson Wentz. Four out of five of Carson Wentz's top receiving options are gone. They're hurt. They're injured. They may be coming back like Alshon Jeffrey, but as of right now and as of last week, they were hurt. Let me read you those names off of the players that are hurt that are currently hurt. Alshon Jeffrey, like we mentioned, he might be coming back pretty soon. Jalen Rager is going to be out for a few weeks. Dallas Goddard is going to be placed on IR with an ankle injury. Deshaun Jackson is going to be out with a uh, hamstring injury, I believe. That's four of the top five receiving options for Carson Wentz. It cannot be Zach Ertz over and over and over every single week. You can only do so much with Zach Ertz before they start double covering him. So who does Carson Wentz have to throw the ball to? There's Zach Ertz, like we mentioned. There's also Greg Ward. But it's not enough to produce uh, a high-scoring affair for this Philadelphia team. And that's why you see this team falling down underneath 20 points a game or even under 25 points just because they don't have that high-powered offense. They were without Miles Sanders in week one. Lane Johnson got hurt. And thankfully, he was able to come back, but he was without, uh, he played without a few snaps or half a game, I believe. So you have these injuries that is affecting this Philadelphia Eagles team. And I don't believe that Carson Wentz 
is all to blame because I still am a believer in Carson Wentz. You're going to call me crazy, but I still believe in Carson Wentz. I still believe that he's a talented quarterback, and I still believe that Philadelphia made a the right decision in choosing Wentz over Nick Foles as their starting quarterback because I promise you if, if it were Foles and the situation instead of Wentz, things would be a lot worse than it is with Carson Wentz. Doug Peterson was asked about Wentz by the media. Are you going to take Carson Wentz out of the game and replace him with Jalen Hurts? That's the question. The media likes to stir things up a bit because he's your second round pick, Jalen Hurts is. And Doug Peterson said that would be a knee-jerk reaction if we took Carson Wentz out of the game right now. If this trend were to continue, and if he were to play two, three, four more games like the way he's been playing right now, yeah, it could happen. But as of right now, Wentz is going to be the starting quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. It's a crappy situation, but it's not all his fault. And the best way that he can prove that, that he is still the uh, the better quarterback or one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL, that he can still produce at his MVP level like he did a, a couple years back, three years back, is this Sunday night against the San Francisco 49ers when your defense is so depleted. There's no Solomon Thomas. There's no Nick Bosa. There's no Richard Sherman. This is the best opportunity for you to succeed in the season that you've been having against one of the better teams, the defending NFC champions, the San Francisco 49ers. Because if Wentz can show out in this game, which I'm not really too confident about, but I feel like he could help the Philadelphia Eagles be in a position at least to help the team win. And if at least he's in that position or he can help the team win, no matter how many interceptions he throws or how many touchdowns he throws, if he can help that team win and get a victory, he's going to continue to be the starting quarterback for the Eagles and he's going to continue to just wait out the clock until all of his players were to come back from injury and this Philadelphia Eagles team will be back to once where it was and that was an above average high scoring team in the NFL. So Carson Wentz, a lot of weight on his shoulders. I'm telling you right now, I am a believer in Wentz, and I still feel like he has a potential to be one of the uh, borderline top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL. Just got to prove it with the team that you've got right now. The next topic, staying on the trend of quarterbacks. About a quarterback that's not doing that well, just like Carson Wentz, but the head coach, unlike Carson Wentz with Doug Peterson saying that is it would be a knee-jerk reaction to take Carson Wentz out of the game. You got another head coach and Ron Rivera saying, I am losing my patience with Dwayne Haskins. I cannot continue to wait week after week after week while we continue to lose football games and have not won a game since we last played in week one. Lost against Arizona in week two, and then again, lost against Cleveland after that three Interception game from Dwayne Haskins. The question is, will Haskins be replaced as the starting quarterback in Washington? Lots to unpack. you got to look at the options that they have at quarterback, and then you've also got to look at the team that they have in Washington. This defense, I still believe, even though it really hasn't been showing with Cleveland, and it really hasn't been showing against Arizona, I still believe that this defense is talented enough to be one of the better top 15 defenses in the NFL with Dwayne Haskins in regards to him and that offense who does he have to throw to he's got he's got Terry McLaurin he's got John Charles Inman who's been taking a step up Steven Sims yeah he's had flashes here and there Logan Thomas the former quarterback it's a tight end he's been targeting him a lot hasn't really been producing that much has that one touchdown and then you've got Antonio Gibson, the rookie, that can be a pass-catching gadget player out of the backfield. There's not a lot to work with with Washington. And that offense just needs to continue to build in the draft, in free agency. They need, continue, need to, they need to continue to make those moves in order to help Dwayne Haskins. However, as far as Dwayne Haskins, the quarterback, I understand Ron Rivera's pain. I understand that you don't have that time. You don't have that patience to wait around 
for Dwayne Haskins. You've already waited around for so long since last year. Granted, not with Ron Rivera, but you had that time for him to grow and develop. You had this whole entire offseason. At what point do you cut it off and say, let's move on? Speaking of the quarterbacks, if they were to move on, I think the first man that comes into everybody's mind is Alex Smith. Alex Smith is accomplished, just like how Matt Nagy moved on to Nick Foles from Mitch Trubisky because Nick Foles is accomplished. He has a proven track record. He's proven to win games. Foles went to the Super Bowl. Alex Smith, don't forget, has been to the NFC Championship in 2011. Alex Smith has his proven track record of not throwing so many interceptions that Dwayne Haskins has been tr- has been throwing. So that'll be a, a, a plus for them. And Smith has his track record of being a winner and being productive and getting, this is very important. This is the most important key. Getting the most out of his players in whichever team that he's around. He did it in San Francisco. He did it in Kansas City. And now he can do it in Washington. And he was doing it before his gruesome leg injury. What a story for Alex Smith. Thought that his career was over. Not not his, even his career, his life. Going through surgery after surgery, getting that infection in his leg. His life was on the line. And he was eventually able to recover. It took quite a bit of time, but that doesn't matter. He was able to recover, and now he's at full speed, and he's able to, uh, he's cleared for physical activity, and now he is on that Washington football team roster and is capable of being a starter in Washington. That's great news to hear if you're an Alex Smith fan. For Smith, he like we mentioned, he gets the best out of his players. We talked about that offense with Dwayne Haskins and how he doesn't have a lot to work with except for maybe Terry McLaurin. Smith, I promise you, is going to get the most out of that offense regardless of who it is. Antonio Gibson, if Alex Smith were to play, would be a top running back in the NFL with his pass catching ability on top of that. You've got Logan Thomas. He could be a productive tight end with Alex Smith under center. You've got Dontrell Enman or Steven Sims being that number two guy for Washington. Yeah, that could be enough with Alex Smith. Smith gets it done day in and day out and can continue to win for Ron Rivera and Washington. So we'll see if Rivera were to move on to Alex Smith or another guy that he's actually very familiar with with his days back down in Carolina, and that is Kyle Allen, quarterback, uh, the former quarterback of the Carolina Panthers, who took over for Cam Newton once he got hurt uh, after two games of the 2019 season and looked fairly decent for Carolina. Now, granted, a lot of his production and his stats was dumping it off to Christian McCaffrey and letting McCaffrey just go ahead and do the work, but why can't Antonio Gibson be that guy? He's got a little bit of a label as a game manager, Kyle Allen does, but like I said, Ron Rivera is familiar with him, and he has even said that if the season were to start uh, today, that granted this was back in the offseason, so without those activities and OTAs and everything that they had with the COVID-19 going on, if they were to go into the season without any physical activity at all, Ron Rivera has said that he will name Kyle Allen this starter over Dwayne Haskins because he's familiar with them and he's comfortable with them without any physical activities. Eventually, Rivera named Haskins a starter, but Allen could be a potential starter for Washington if it weren't for Alex Smith in the running as well. So leave your comments down below and chat with us as well in the chat if you're watching the premiere live. Who do you guys feel like could be the starting quarterback for Washington, is is the Dwayne Haskins experiment over in Washington? And are they moving on to someone that is more accomplished like Alex Smith? Now to get into fantasy football questions that we have for you guys for this week's show. You guys have been awesome asking your fantasy football questions with uh, those YouTube comments and those uh, starts and sits videos and those waiver wire uh, videos as well. Also, hit, hitting us up on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and asking your questions through DMs. Thank you guys, and we encourage you guys to continue to ask those questions, but we wanted to go ahead and choose a few that we wanted to answer on this show. So I'll continue to be uh, responding to you guys' comments throughout the week, but as far as like an in-person 
a response on the show like we do every single week. This is a segment that we take to answer some of those questions. So first question that we have is from YouTuber It's Nick. Yo, with three O's. Yo, just subscribed. Thank you, Nick. Short and sweet, and I like it. Quick question. I've got Mixon and Drake, both whom haven't done anything at all special. Mm, I agree. I am confused and wondering if they are worth holding on to or try and trade them. You can try to trade them if you want. I don't think you're going to get a lot out of it with the production that they're going to have. I personally would say it is worth holding on to Kenyon Drake and Joe Mixon. We saw this last year with Joe Mixon. Beginning of the season made you have buyer's remorse. Why did I draft this guy in the second round? What has he done? But then later on, second half of the season, as the season progresses and goes on and on and on, Joe Mixon all of a sudden comes out of nowhere. Oh, that's a nice surprise. We did this uh, fantasy football award show uh, last year. You can watch it if you want to. I think we released it January 2020, actually. It was in regards to the 2019 season. And we were just handing out awards like fantasy football MVP and uh, just having fun with it. And there was one award that we had. uh, It was called the patience award the player that you had to have the most patience and hold on to in order to win a fantasy football championship or at least have a successful season and you're glad that you held on to him some of the candidates if you remember Devontae Parker last year was in the same boat didn't do much in the beginning uh, or in the first half of the season they came on strong in the second half of the season Joe Mixon was another candidate and eventually we chose him to win that award a guy that you have to have that patience with to hold on to, didn't do anything in the beginning beginning half of the season, but then went on to do amazing things in the later half. Other candidates included like Stephon Diggs was another, another guy that you have to have patience with. But yeah, Joe Mixon, a guy that you have to have patience with. I would hold on to him and I still feel like Mixon could be that RB2 for the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, as far as Kenyon Drake, you, you may not know it, but Drake is one of the few three down backs in the NFL right now. I know there's talk about Chase Edmonds, and he does look strong and solid at times, and that's why you may want to stash him if you have the chance. But Drake has been getting, I believe he's top five out of all running backs and carries and attempts this year uh, for the Arizona Cardinals. So if he's top five and carries, yeah, I'd want to keep him. I'd want to hold on to him. And granted that he has a, a, a great matchup this week against the Carolina Panthers, yeah. Mixon and Drake, I would hold on to him. And Nick, I would not trade them if I were you. Next question that we have is from All Rise 99. Would you start the Colts defense or the Kansas City Chiefs? Uh, at this point, I mean, it's kind of a given that the Chiefs defense, they're pretty solid. They kept Lamar Jackson in check, but they're facing the New England Patriots. And I would rather take the Colts uh, against the Bears who are starting a, uh, a fresh quarterback who could do well. But your odds are and your chances are that the Colts are going to succeed well more and do much a much better job than someone like the Kansas City Chiefs who's facing the New England Patriots, someone like Bill Belichick. So uh, that could be a high-scoring game between the Chiefs and the Patriots. So I would not start the Patriots. Instead, I would start the Indianapolis Colts. This next one is from YouTuber Jonas. Why Ronald Jones, though? Probably talking in regards to that starts and sits video where I came out and said that Ronald Jones is a must sit against the LA Chargers this week. Let me put it this way. I have been ragging on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in fantasy football, not in real life. Real life, great team. And fantasy football about them playing hot potato with their team, not just at the running back position, but also at wide receiver. That would have that would worry me if I owned any Tampa Bay Buccaneer tight end, wide receiver, running back. You don't know who's going to have the hot hand because in their minds and their thinking, they're just playing real football. They have a lot of talent that they can spread the ball around to and whoever the defense decides to uh, double team or focus their attention on for that week, they're going to go ahead and pass it to the other guy. And if they pass it to the other guy, they're not going to have that productive of a game. You know, you could talk about Mike Evans, two receptions, two yards, two touchdowns. Yeah, that could save your fantasy week that for that game. But that doesn't build a lot of confidence 
in you. Chris Godwin's going to be out, you know, suffering hamstring con- uh, in a concussion uh, injury. Scotty Miller trying to be this guy that steps up and could be that person that takes over for Chris Godwin, but it's just a lot of guessing. And then Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette having that long run with 12 carries against the Carolina Panthers. Is it going to be Leonard Fournette this week? Is it going to be Ronald Jones? Then Fournette goes out and gets three carries. Jones goes back to his regular role as a starting running back. It's it's just too much to handle, too much of a headache. And that's why I don't trust Ronald Jones against the Chargers. The Chargers defense, it's not like a, a known for being a run-stopping defense. They're they're decent against the run, but I I would not deal with the headache of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I, I, I ragged on them in the offseason because I said that for Tom Brady to reach what Jameis Winston did with 5,100 yards passing and for that 33 touchdowns, forget the 30 interceptions. Okay, that's irrelevant to receivers in fantasy football, but for that 5,100 yards and that 33 touchdowns, he's going to have to match that in order for Mike Evans and Chris Godwin to have that same productive season that they had in 2019. And right now at this trend, he's not going to match that. So if I had any Buccaneers on my team, I would wait until they had a big game and then I'd trade them. I, I seriously would because it's it's not worth dealing with that headache. So that's the explanation on Ronald Jones. Uh, we've got a few more. Let's start with uh, YouTuber Jack Mazarek. He said, is David Johnson a better play? Some, I'm guessing play. Is David Johnson a better play than Austin Eckler? Full PPR. I love David Johnson. I feel like he was underrated. And he's not going to be back to that David, that David Johnson that he was in Arizona. But he is going to be a good consistent, I feel like, sometimes here and there start. And a good flex player with RB2 potential for most weeks. So you could start him. But if you want to talk about Austin Eckler how good he's been doing since becoming or since Justin Herbert has become the starting quarterback for the LA Chargers. I like that a lot. Okay. You look at the amount of targets that Austin Eckler has this season. Go look it up. It's ridiculous for a running back. But on top of that, all those targets, 100% completion catch rate, 100% never dropped a target that was thrown his way. A lot of dink and dunks, a lot of open field uh, moves that Austin Eckler can run with. So if you want to talk about full PPR with him getting double digits in receptions last week, go with Austin Eckler. As long as Justin Herbert is the starting quarterback, you cannot go wrong with Austin Eckler. And I'm jealous of Austin Eckler fantasy owners being myself a uh, Josh Kelly owner because they're going to run with Josh Kelly when the game is in control. And when you're behind with a deficit, for instance, against Tampa Bay with a high-scoring offense, they could be. They're going to lean in with Austin Eckler as a starting running back. So Eckler's value in fantasy football is extremely high, especially if you're in PPR. And I would just keep on riding with a hot hand in Eckler. Next up, YouTuber will do a couple more. Unsalted Hoagie, what a name. Why are you saying to play Joe Burrow and not T. Higgins? So T. Higgins is a must-sit. Joe Burrow is a must-start. The main reason behind T. Higgins being a must-sit is because one game that T. Higgins popped off, and you also have to look at that he's the third option for uh, Joe Burrow. If you want to talk about more in depth, you could say that he's the fourth or fifth option. If you want to talk about how Joe Burrow, in his game, he likes to dump off the ball a lot. He likes to dump it off to Giovanni Bernard or Joe Mixon or... Dare I say his name, Drew Sample, the one reception man last week, but then a week prior to that had seven receptions. He likes to check down the ball a lot. So Joe Burrow is a start because I feel like that that Jacksonville defense is not as good as it used to be, giving up 24 fancy points to Ryan Fitzpatrick, and then the week before giving up about 26 fancy points to Ryan Tannehill. That means that you're on a good trend to start Joe Burrow. But as far as the options that he has to throw at wide receiver, there's just so many options. And T. Higgins is going to get lost in the shuffle because he's still targeting A.J. Green like crazy. Tyler Boyd, 17 receptions in the last two weeks. So you know he's going to be targeted a lot. Building that chemistry with Joe Burrow ever since the offseason being Burrow's favorite target. And T. Higgins is just going to be a guessing game. So I would just wait one more week with T. Higgins. He's worth the stash. He's worth the ad off the waivers. But I would not start him against Jacksonville. 
And then the last question that we have is from Joel Schuwerer. Hopefully I said that correctly. Colts defense versus Foles IDK. I can see Foles scoring won't get the same numbers that Sam Darnold gave. Okay, so this is the same question pretty much uh, or in regards to the Colts defense or the Chiefs asked by All Rise 99. We talked about the Colts defense against Foles. I would rather have the Colts defense against almost any other defense except for the you know the exception of the obvious ones like the Baltimore Ravens uh, or the Denver Broncos against the New York Jets. I'd have the Colts defense as one of those defenses that you would start against Nick Foles in that Chicago Bears offense because that Bears offense so far, even without Foles, has not been productive. With Foles coming in there, it could be a different game, but I don't feel like it's going to be enough for the Colts to be a bad fantasy football play. If I had to project how many fantasy points they would score, maybe a decent amount, maybe slightly above average, maybe seven, eight, nine fantasy points potentially getting in the double digits, but that's enough for me to consider them a start given the options that you have in deeper leagues in 12 man leagues or in 14 uh, man leagues. I would start the Colts defense with confidence against Nick Foles and that Chicago Bears offense. Uh, Of course, he won't give up the same numbers that Sam Darnold gave because now my gosh, here's your your weekly Adam Gase uh, uh, mention and how much we do not like Adam Gase. With that Adam Gase offense and Sam Darnold in there, uh, I, I I don't think that the Colts aren't going to be as productive against the Bears like they were against the Jets. But listen, the Colts defense is still a good defense, a top 10 defense, and I would not stray away from the Indianapolis Colts. But that's going to do it for this week's episode of Time to Football. Hey, let me ask you a question. Did you guys enjoy the show? If you did, why don't you just go ahead and smash that subscribe button and hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and social media as well. Interact with us on there. If you have more of these fantasy football questions, subscribe to us so you can stay up to date when we come out with more fantasy football videos or even more shows and more full podcasts where we not just talk about fantasy football, but we talk about the NFL in general like we did tonight. Every Wednesday night, we come out with this and I'm going to be interacting with you guys as we premiere this in the chat on the side if you're watching this on the computer. Hey, how you guys doing? Thanks for sticking around for the whole entire show. Or if you're watching on mobile, down underneath. What's up, guys? How you guys doing? So subscribe to us and interact interact with us. I'll be on the show in the chat talking to you guys as we watch this. Also subscribe to us on the go on iTunes. Listen to us on the podcast app so you don't have to watch an entire 45-minute or an hour-long video up on YouTube. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching this show. I hate my Atlanta Falcons. They're going to get destroyed by the Green Bay Packers, and I'll see you next week.